this video we will uh, put everything together and make it ready to be put onto the water. And first of all, uh, we're going to shorten the uh, servo rod using a Dremel. And we're going to grease that rod as well to make it difficult for the water to come in. We're going to fix the propeller using some Loctite. And we're going to wash and tape and glue that boat. But before we proceed with the gluing, let's have a look at the radio. As you see, I'm very fond of marking the channels with a function. And this makes it far easier for me uh, to loan my boat away to someone else. And even when I start using the boat when the winter is over. The SkyDroid is programmed using an app. And you find a QR code to install that app in the manual. Just use that and install it. With the app installed, open it. Also start the remote and start the boat so they get connection. Uh, there are a lot of features here. You can also set the Bluetooth device name, but we are going to focus on two things. That's the hand settings or the installation or configuration of mode. And then we will use the parameter screen to assign switches to our Pixel channels. To gather throttle and steering on one stick, we use hand. USA will have the throttle and steering on the left stick, while Japan have it on the right stick. Let's continue with the adjust parameters. Here you can do quite a lot of things. Let's first focus on assigning a channel to a remote switch like this. So you select the switch for the channel in a dropdown. If you at some point need to reverse the channel, you tick that reverse checkbox. And below that, you have the fields to set minimum and maximum uh, values for the PVM. The failsafe is not a failsafe, it's the midpoint. So you can adjust that as well. All in all, really easy to set up. But let's move back to the boat. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the servo rod. And obviously, when you install it, it's far too long. We need to shorten it. So typically, you then extend it, mark a tape, and, and drag it in, and then mark on that tape so you know where to cut it off. Use a Dremel, and then make sure to remove those sharp ends using a file of some sorts. Do not cut it too short. Just try uh, and take it piece by piece until you're satisfied so the bay tray opens. After we have shortened it, we should apply some grease to the server rod and you can also add some more than I do in this sample. Uh, the purpose of the grease is to block water from entering in, uh, even though the tube is uh, pointing upwards. Uh, it might still uh, get some water in there and that grease inside that tube, between the tube and the steel, will make it harder for the water to come through. Put it back in and you're done. The clearance between upper and lower hull in the battery area is so tiny that it might be difficult to close it with glue. So I instead add foam around the edge of the upper hull and will then squeeze that in between the lower and upper hull. Now that the foam is in place, we can connect everything before we squeeze it together. I start with the power button. I also opted to add a bay tray opener button and I need to connect that as well. On the side, we have the uh, thrower uh, connections. Uh, connect those before we then move over to the front and attach the antenna cable to the booster. And then finally, we connect the lights. Do yourself a favor, double check before squeezing the parts together. The first time I built a bait boat, I actually glued it before testing. And let me say, I regretted it. So test everything. Lights, the bait tray. Perfect. And also test the motors. I'm doing a blow test here, uh, but I did test it before and see what happens if you don't glue on that propeller. It comes loose. 
The propeller is easily fixed to the shank using some Loctite, uh, but before I apply that, let me point out a couple of things here. So I added a piece of paper between the white washer and the nut, and that leaves a little, little space between the propeller and the shank. The gluing it on is fairly straightforward. Uh, just apply some uh, Loctite to the uh, threads and then you just screw that propeller on and leave it to dry. And with that Loctite in place, you're never going to lose that propeller again. And finally, it's about time to glue it. And I have added tape here for aesthetic purposes, obviously, but also for functional purposes. I put the tape high enough to exactly fit this um, template. And by dragging it along the glue, I will then squeeze uh, glue into the tiny space between the upper and the lower hull. And then finally remove the tape and it will also look good. A little word of warning, um, don't drag your boat on the head around like I did here. I had to fix a new set of foam around the battery lids afterwards. Anyway, not going to bore you with how I put on uh, this glue, uh, but I think the end result is not perfect, but it looks okay. And now as the final step, the boat is built. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures uh, shortly. Uh, we started up again a uh, mission planner, <clears throat> and the reason for that is uh, I'm going to do this really simple this time. I'm going to use the parameters that I have from my previous boat build. Uh, this is a fast way if you build the same boat many times, then you can uh, copy the uh, parameter file, remove all that's dangerous, uh, like uh, compass settings and so on. And then you are left over with a file that's safe to use, and then you can basically configure the boat in a matter of seconds. Um, in order to demonstrate, uh, let's have a look in the uh, config, and we're going to have a look at the modes. So right now, I've set everything to manual, just to mess everything up here. And then we're going to show you what's going to happen when we use a parameter file. So if we go into the parameter, one of the screens over to the right, you have the ability to compare parameters. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to se select the file prepared. This file will then be uh, available for you uh, for download in the description. So when you open it, oh, let me drag it in here, <clears throat> you will see that um, mission planner reads through everything that's in a file and finds the parameters uh, that's uh, different than currently in the boat. So like arming check, it could be set to zero, armoring require set to zero, cruise throttle uh, 30 percent uh, for cruise speed. That's uh, not typical for a boat. This is bumped up to 80. Then we have the frame, frame class, tail save action, um, and as you see here, what I could have done in the second video, instead of going into Mission Planner and setting all of these modes one by one, I could actually just have used this file and then everything will be ready exactly like I wanted it. But for this purpose now, let's see here that uh, uh, Mission Planner has uh, discovered that the modes are different now in the boat compared to this file. So I'm going to just write those and select only the modes. And then we can continue. And then we need to write the parameters. Then we have this pop up. Are you sure? I don't think I want to see that again. I'm going to click OK. And we get this successfully saved. And if I now go back to flight modes, you'll see that I have the setup that I wanted. So that's how we use a parameter file and the parameters that I use in my boat will then be available for download in the description. To finalize the boat, I had to build a connector for my bait thrower. 
and then suddenly I realized that I didn't have any batteries at all. And since I, I'm going on uh, fishing uh, in a couple of days, I had to build a couple of packs in a hurry. And then finally I'm ready to go. In this video series, I focus on exactly what's needed uh, to build a bait boat. Uh, but there are much more information available on the Ardor Pilot wiki and the Ardor Pilot discussion forums where you can ask questions and have real competent people reply. And the next video, we're going to have a thorough look into these pages uh, so you get familiar with it uh, because you're probably going to need it.